Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we got all sorts of issues that are going on in, in this town of ours at this point in time. It's really a tough situation. And um, I want to discuss an issue that has been on the table again for quite some time. And as you know, when I ran for, when I ran for mayor this past, uh, this time around, I was very th thinking about the issue of homelessness that we have in our city and our state. And the idea is that there was an issue of housing for these folks. Uh, what do you do about getting them off the street, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I discovered an issue that uh, I was somewhat familiar with in a number of years, and it was about Wapato. There was a facility that's sitting right here in the, in the state of Oregon, i.e. Portland, in North Portland aspect of it, that was very much available. And uh, it's just been sitting there. It's been, it's been sitting there and from a historical standpoint. Politically, we've been paying for it on and on and on. And it's just been like a sore spot. And, and no one wanted to basically talk to, quote, how do we get rid of this thing or, and, some, and use it, use it effectively. It's sitting there. So long and short, all, I said, well, hey, look, I'm going to, I just happen to have known someone to, uh, through their political career and, and just being around and whatever we, and I never actually got this particular person involved in this process because, you know, he had his life it's, it's himself. And so I said, well, look, I'm going to give him a call because people want, we need to put this thing in behind us one way or the other. We need to do something with it. We need to come up with some sort of a solution right now, okay? And I'm talking about a gentleman that I've respected and I've known for a number of years. You know him too, especially the old timers, you know, like me who's been involved or whatever. I'm talking about Bernie Gusto. Bernie is right here, sitting me with me right here. And what we're going to do, we're going to go back to Wapato from its inception. When it all started, it all started on, on his shift, on his beat. He was sheriff of Multnomah County at that point in time. I can still remember those days uh, in those debates, if you will, between the, the council folks and, and Bernie. And it, they were very good debates aspect of it. And he was ready to go. He's ready to deal with it, big time and whatever. But the politics kept keeping him out of the deal because they had that money, if you will, that prevented him from hiring the folks to actually run the deal. I mean, he had all sorts of creation at that point in time. Contracts with the feds to put some folks in, over, overflow with the police department. I remember the whole deal but they wouldn't do it anyway, regardless. But again, it was other people's money. That was the key, other people's money. And we all remember that today, you got me? So I got Bernie here, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna let him do most of the talking. And uh, and if you haven't read this issue of the Tribune, the Tribune did an excellent job the other day, Tuesday, May 30th, and a very interesting article that says, County Inc's tentative deal to sell Wapato Jail. And uh, they're looking at the possibility of a developer, uh, to sell it to this thing, a, a developer, by $10 million, and we will have invested $105 million to date. $105 million, $10 million today, okay? And there's still some issues as, as far as the developer in terms of, uh, they won't disclose in terms of what they're going to do with the building or this, that, and the other, and say, and, and they're saying they're going to be able to maybe work on the on the situation. They've already thrown another little hint in there that says, says that uh, they've, they've assessed, they appraised the building to date the value of the appraisal was $8.5 million. And said, this guy's going to be going back, they're going to be going back to the table trying to negotiate what they're going to do. I, I'm, I'm pretty well saying, he, he may be able to pick it up for about five mil. <laughs> yeah. so, see what I'm saying? So anyway, welcome, old buddy. Welcome. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate Bruce. that very much. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, look, why don't you just go on and start, uh, start off right up front with it, maybe introduce yourself a little bit sure. about your sheriff and all that. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. So I'm... Uh, I'm a long-time uh, law enforcement guy. Uh, yes. Started with Oregon State Police back in the 70s, 22 years there. And I was the chief at the city of Gresham before I got elected to Multnomah County okay. as a sheriff for two terms. But let's talk about, let me start with the end answer, and that's not the right solution for Wapato. And just a little history about Wapato, okay. if you remember. Wapato was part of uh, Bev Stein and Dan Noley books and crooks. So it was a situation, it was a, it was a levy that was put together with library and Wapato, what turned out to be Wapato. So if you voted for one, you voted for the other. Okay. So, uh, so on the back of the library vote, okay. Wapato uh. was passed with the uh, understanding there was going to be this huge need for those jail beds. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you remember Wapato was a, a footprint of 2,000 
uh, potential beds. Mm -hmm. And all the infrastructure in Wapato was built for those 2,000 beds. Really? Only constructed 500 at a time, but the kitchen, the HVAC, the 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 the, uh, um, the electrical, the computer, everything in Wapato was built for 2,000 beds and ready to push up walls. And so, the land was there too for it to and, compensate for that. And, and the land was there as well. So that $58 million levy passed, and before I became sheriff in 2003, the construction had already started. Uh, that, well, that levy was clear back in '96 uh, when it when it passed, and in 2003 the construction had begun when I took over. We'll just fast forward a little bit, and I'll tell you that we finished Wapato on time, under budget, and ready to open in 2000. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to think about this a minute. 2005, I okay. believe, when okay. 2005, 2006 in July, Wapato, of course, never opened. But let me let me tell you that the, the solution the county is looking at is is totally incorrect. Mm. Um, we have we have two major jail facilities in this in this uh, county. <clears throat> One's the detention center downtown. Where, where the demonstration's being held mm -hmm. right in front of it. Mm -hmm. The other one is on, on 122nd, uh, and that's uh, Inverness Jail that's been there and built in phases over many years in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. So those are the two facilities that house our inmates. Wapato was supposed to be a supplement to those to add beds to the system. But what I could never get, uh, what I could never get the county commission to understand was that what really needed to happen was we needed to close Inverness on 122nd, mm -hmm. push up a couple more uh, dorms at Wapato, maybe some isolation, a little bit disciplinary dorms, and move to our new facility because that facility was a 50 and 100 year facility. Um, and and at that point, close what it was Inverness. There was a couple of the things we need to do. We need to move the laundry from there to Wapato. But two things would have happened. Three things now, and to your point, mm -hmm. um, uh, n number one, we'd have had the, the jails on the I-5 corridor from downtown out to uh, Marine Drive, mm -hmm. out to where Wapato would be, as opposed to 122nd mm -hmm. to downtown. Uh, the second thing that would have happened, we'd have had a brand new facility. Remember, Wapato was state-of-the-art when it was built. It was it was meant for everything from uh, uh, the new 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 philosophy of housing inmates to having uh, uh, um, uh, diabetic treatment on site at, mm. at Wapato. Uh, so so the very expensive uh, uh, portion of the medical thing we were going to do with people with diabetes that were were incarcerated was going to be taken care of there. We had stations for uh, for for dialysis mm -hmm. already ready for at Wapato. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of cost savings thought mm -hmm. built into the building. Yeah. Okay. And um, so uh, then let's let's just talk about what you're concerned about. So now we have we would have had two facilities, a brand new one right. and, a, and a supermax, the only supermax facility in the state of Oregon we run in Multnomah County, which is a detention center. But here's what would have happened with could have happened with Inverness. Now now we're at 122nd, right on a major uh, major corridor transportation corridor. Mm -hmm. Wapato doesn't serve the needs of uh, the homeless very well. Where it is, there is no. It is not only way back off uh, on Marine Drive. Then it's a mile back inside of there to get even out to Marine Drive. Mm -hmm. So it's not just sitting on the street. Mm -hmm. But we'd have had we'd have had Inverness to create a real homeless shelter that really had a potential for people. And even if you had the laundry and the services that were there, people had transportation, they could have gotten places or medical facilities there. Mm -hmm. So we'd accomplish more than just one thing. Very short-sighted to do it this way. Um, Wapato costs about $350,000 a year to maintain even when there's nobody there. Mm. That's between the water, sewer, mm -hmm. development charges, mm -hmm. uh, upkeep, those kind of things. So. Um, what, what really should happen here is we should push up a couple more walls at Wapato, create a few more, spend a little bit more money, close the other facility, or use that for the homeless situation we're talking about. Much, much better suited for those things. Okay, much, much, much better suited. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's what this sh this is very a very short sighted solution. Uh, it's not about jail beds. It's about using the facilities we have right. in a much smarter yeah, way. Okay. 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 Good. So so getting, again going back to Wapato aspect of it, thinking in terms of um, what would we use that facility for? Kind of again? Wapato. Yeah. We use it for a jail facility. For a jail facility. So we replace we replace Inverness on 122nd. Right. No uh, with 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 beds there okay. we need a couple uh, a couple additions to it but very small amount of money actually in total 
and again, we'd have a facility that was usable and really much more better suited for our homeless issue, for both in location, structure, everything else. Uh, it, Wapato was never going to be good for that, but but Inverness could very well be converted to that 122nd right off Marine Drive. I should be right off Sandy Boulevard. Right, 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 and right. On right, a transportation right, right, route. Right, right, sure. Right, right. Well, see, like you said, we have the problem now. Yep. It's not going to get easier, if you will. No. We're going to need those beds, yep. right? And we're going to have to house these people. And, and the other thing I was thinking about along that same line, we still don't know who's on the streets. No, we just certainly don't know who's on the we streets. We don't know who's on the street. The folks well, coming in. And what we do know is that we have a lot of mental illness on the yes, streets. Yes, And the things that you see Portland suffering through now is a lack of focus about the mentally ill on our mm -hmm, streets. Mm -hmm. and I can take it from a guy that spent a lot of years dealing with the mentally ill, all the way from the time that we had places like Damage. Damage, yes. yes and which, close that down. Yeah, which I, as a trooper, as the state police took people to, dropped them off. They had yes. they had humane treatment. Right. They were there for a period of time to actually get help, Bruce. Right. Uh, what we do to them now is we, we bring them to jail, we medicate them for three days, yep. they go to court, the court can't find Give anything wrong with them, pills, and, them and the out, back onto the street, and then we find them with severe and uh, uh, that kind of ingrained mental illness mm -hmm. that you can't treat any longer. Mm -hmm. you know? And we could do that with the 120 seconds. No, we certainly could. We could do that. With much no easier than we could at Wapato. Yes, yes. Much easier. And we're probably spending so much money that in all due respect, the money we could, uh, that's just the savings alone right. could rehab those, those whole, those, both of those buildings. Yes, that's, and, and again, we'd have two facilities that would be jail facilities, then we'd have that facility for homeless, maybe some mental illness treatment. That facility actually serves the mentally ill in our jail system uh, primarily for the sheriff's office. We have a very significant, very sophisticated mentally ill treatment uh, 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 discipline there between, we have mental health nurses, we have mental health doctors, mm -hmm. we have deputies that are trained in mental health. Don't believe that, th that the mental, mentally ill in this county don't get don't get good treatment. The mm -hmm. unfortunate part about it, the best treatment's in jail. That's the wrong place. That, that's, that's the wrong place. place. So how do we get there? How do we, cause that's, that's what we're really talking about, solution. Right. You see, because it is, a, it, it is an eyesore. It's a, it's a headache. People are trying to figure out what to do. You know, the, these folks that are on there right now, they have no idea of this history. No. I have, have no idea, and we lack we lack any any common sense. Yes. One thing, but no business sense. No, no business sense. So at all. this is this is you know they, they're looking to they're chasing a, a solution to a problem that exists, and what they what really when they when they get rid of Wapato, they haven't fixed any part of the problem. Right. But Inverness on its face is yes. much better suited for the mentally ill, and it's also and, and it's also better suited for the homeless because yes. the fact of the matter is they they they'll have a place to have transportation. Right. Can get and it's right here. Right here. Right. right. Instead of it makes a lot of sense. It, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. And then Wapato is isolated, you know, in, in a different area aspect of it. They don't need no transportation to a certain degree. You know you know, really Bruce, when when I uh, when I when I was there I tried to talk to the county commissioners and by the way our mayor Ted Wheeler was a guy I tried to talk to about it. Uh, I tried to tell him, say, listen, you know, the the animal control uh, shelter in this county is a disgrace. Mm -hmm. Let's build. We have enough property, even with all the jail beds, to build wow. it at Wapato. So why don't we build animal control out there right. and have the inmates uh, right. take care of the right. animals as part of their rehabilitation, their therapy. Good for the animals. Good for the inmates. Right. We have walking area. We have oh everything needed. God. Nobody. They just can't see past very short-sighted solutions. This is a very short-sighted oh, solution. Long. And then when you made the point about the 2,000, this thing was originally was supposed to be built for 2,000 2, beds. 2,000 beds. 2,000 beds. A lot beds. of folks didn't know that. Right, I'm sure they you don't know. know. And it's there. Yeah, it's there. And then the other point I was going to, I want you to spend a little bit more time, before you got to be county sheriff aspect of it, that was already there. Yes. They were the, who, who basically put that together? The, the, are you talking about the jail itself? Yeah, the jail. The, well, the, again, the, the proposal was made by Bev Stein. Bev was, Stein. And Dan Noley, who was Dan, the sheriff. Dan's still around. Dan's still around. He'll remember. He remember. Oh, you remember. he remember that. I still that. remember Dan on the possum incident, too. <laughs> when I did some stuff, got to get him on here. Yeah. That, we got to close that door, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's interesting. So, so Dan... And, and, and Bev. Bev, they, they passed it. The, the, the intention was right. The numbers were probably 
questionable whether we needed the beds or not. But really what really happened is the funding fell out from underneath because really we're in a matrix situation. So now in, in the county jails where people who should be staying in jail until they see a right. judge are right. not, right. They, and they're not bailing, they're right. being let out on their recognizance. Mm -hmm. The most the most recent one uh, that we we could talk about was the guy that was exposing himself to children. He was out before school was out when, mm -hmm. after they had arrested mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And we had one we had one just very recently that should have been, should have stayed. Should have stayed in it, should have stayed in it. Now, yeah, should have stayed, but they matrixed him. They yeah, and I'm oh, not wow. sure. Oh, wow. We had better solutions than that, wow. but I'll let wow. the sheriff decide well, well, that. Dan, again, on that same line, just on this as a side note, what do you think about our 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 system today? The whole issue of our criminal justice our system. Criminal justice well, system. you like to call it a law enforcement system. You know, right. the, the police get a lot of focus, but the police have no control over. You know, I like to talk to you about the police today. Yes. They'll be dealing with that demonstration downtown, right? Right. right? right. right. And it is crowded downtown. Yes, it is crowded. So you remember the police, if you look at police like, um, if you look like the criminal justice system like a maze, the police do nothing but drop the marble in the top of the maze. Mm -hmm. So they drop the, they make a decision to arrest somebody or not arrest somebody, but right. if they do, right. they, they drop the marble in. After they drop the marble in, it's out of their control entirely. It's the district attorney who makes the decision whether they're going to prosecute. It's the judge who makes the decision whether they're going to stay in jail. It's the, it's the county commission that decides whether they're going to fund jail beds. Yes, right. The police are simply the entry point. Yes, right. Now, they're a very imp important part of it. They're just the most visible part of it. But the injustice in this community has a lot more to do with who's treated how once the police take them to jail, mm -hmm. who stays, who loses their job because they stay. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we need to have a very careful look at the bail system in our, in our entire country. The bail is a... Uh, probably the greatest urban lie about justice that somehow mm -hmm. somebody who puts a thousand dollars down should get out and somebody who doesn't have the thousand should stay mm -hmm. that's not a, that's not a way to judge because mm -hmm. a thousand dollars means nothing in terms mm -hmm. of we don't their security is nothing it's whether or not that individual should be is going to lose their job lose right. their family right. and right. then they're going to build a criminal record for the want of a thousand dollars right right that's right. what's going to happen well you know since i've got you here and i'm really going to take advantage of you now <laughs> you know the other thing that it's sort of like um we just don't know what to do about this issue. Is that, is that you hear this? You hear this this term a lot of times. Like, well, the police runs the city. Mm -hmm. You know, we've elected a mayor. If mm -hmm. you will, uh, it's almost like the commander in general if you're of the base mm -hmm. aspect of it. We, we've got a we got a mayor. Then we've got a chief of police. That's his supposedly his administrative aspect of it. Right. But then we've hired. Then, but then we, we then there's another person on staff that's the liaison, the police mm -hmm. liaison to the police. And then you got the union sitting up here, and then they're the ones that are there. They're, they're basically they got the ground truth. Those are the folks day in and day out, right? Right. right. So so there's a sort of a confusion. Who runs the police department? And why, but, and why do we have this system this way? Well, a couple of things. The, the, the best thing the, the people in the city of Portland can do is change their form of government. Mm -hmm. They need to get rid of the strong mayor, council form of government, need to go to a city manager form of government. You know, I, I'm, I, this is a comment about me as about anything else. You know, just because somebody gets elected to something doesn't right. make them qualified to do mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because we elect people, and I, and I trust voters to make the right decision about the choices they have, but just because somebody's elected mayor doesn't make them a good administrator mm -hmm. or a mm -hmm. city councilor. A, a, a good right. administrator. So we need a professional manager in this city and then a separate policy making body called the city council and the mayor. Mm. But the fact is, is that what happens is, is we find mayors overwhelmed in a hurry. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and what like happened? Like today. And the uh, the issue really is, is that the, the what you got to remember is the, the union and the cops well, here long after the mayor and the yeah, council yeah, are all gone. Yeah, yeah. And in the days, you'll remember the names like Stan Peters. Oh, yes, Dan, and yeah. Stan, Stan developed a very strong model of police in charge yes, leadership. Yes, and yes. if you were a city councilor and wanted to get reelected, yeah. you better, you better talk to Stan. Better talk to Stan. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, then, and then you think about it, all, most of the benefits that they have today is a result of Stan. Stan. Yeah, Stan did a lot of that Stan. kind of thing. But here's the thing. is Fortunately for us, that we have a policing model in this state and, and in this county and in this city that most of our cops are honest, hardworking yeah. cops want to mm -hmm. do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But they can't do the right thing if they don't get the political support yeah. they need. Yeah. That doesn't mean they get away with anything. Uh, but it does mean that the mayor uh, has a consistent model of of uh, justice in the city. And the idea that we let people continue to burn in our streets and throw rocks through our windows mm -hmm. and still hand out permits. Mm -hmm. And yet today we're going to have a situation where, uh, you know, the mayor's trying to do the right thing, but you can't stand up and wave red flags yeah. and tell one group yeah. you can't have it. And yeah. then the other group who's waiting to be told that they can't have it, it causes that kind of a problem. We need a more consistent model of justice and, and uh, discipline on the streets in this city.
you know, and, and I'm not trying to be, like I said, we're just taking the opportunity to also talk about the issues that we have right now right. in this city and our state, right here in Major. Right. We, we're worldwide right now. People are looking at us like it's going on a style. Right. And, uh, and like I said, I, I can, I see him, I see him struggling, you know, and, and I've been around, as you say, just like you said, both of us, we've been around a long time, mm -hmm. aspect of it. He has no support. In many ways, he's got four other councilmen. It's almost like being having, you know, being a squad leader. Yes, what and, it is. And, and you're doing all the work. You right. I mean? You're the point. You're the whole. You're doing the whole damn thing. He doesn't know how to delegate those things because he doesn't have the background on it. Well, you know, and, and I worked with well uh, Mayor Wheeler when he was when he was County Commission Chair Wheeler. Yes. When I was sheriff. Ah. Well, so, um, I, I will tell you that I, he's a bright individual, uh, and I I. The city needs him to do well, but he's five months into this, and yes. and things are a little rocky, yes. a little shaky. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But oh, yeah. Um, we'll hope that it goes well downtown today. I think the real issue, though, Bruce, is the one you always raise: is that the the, the fact of the matter is that the police are only one part of yeah. what we do here, mm -hmm. and and the enforcement piece of it. You know, we we think enforcement's just about the arrest. No, it has a lot more no, to do with everything else. The mm -hmm. criminal justice system is in fact a system, and the justice in the system has little to do with police, the decision police make, as long as they make that, make it fairly, objectively, mm -hmm. uh, respect people's rights, treat people correctly, uh, and has a lot more to do with what happens after the, the police mm -hmm. officer never mm -hmm. sees that guy again. Mm -hmm. so. You know, when I think about Stan, when, we, when he was there and I was there, Stan would come on the show periodically, and the whole idea of them coming on the show was to educate the people about what they did. Right. I mean, what that process was, right. and and we and he we talk about each of the various divisions, if you will, things of that nature, mm -hmm. to educate the public. The public today are not as educated no. anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And, and in all due respect, uh, the union is there, but like you said, they're, they're they're trying to protect themselves politically, and you know, and you got you got Daryl Daryl that's sitting up there, Daryl Turner, hell of a guy. Yes, former military well. kind of a guy, yeah. and he's a black guy. Yeah. And, you know, we, you would think we wouldn't have no damn problem with this whole issue, but. But we're not using it effectively. I mean, it's, it's, it's a problem. Yeah, I think you know we 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 take a look at the the, the fact that the the mayor now thinks he needs a new police chief. So yeah. he's looking nationwide. So he, <clears throat> you can't do things like you just can't put out a job announcement that says that your cops are all biased and yeah. racist, yeah. and expect that the police are going to yeah. sit and take yeah. it. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. And then you've got an African American black yeah, guy sitting there. Sitting I mean, there. Uh, he, and yeah. he's got to he's got to listen to this he, stuff, right? That's right. He's already a pressure on him, and he's got to still man. He's still got to manage, he's got to manage his the troops. troops. <laughs> because regardless of what, hey, you know, that's whatever right. they think, and they're still human beings. That's right. They go home, they do their own mindset, whatever. You may not like it, whatever, but they know what to deal when you got on that show. What do you got on your collar? Or what do you got on your sleeve, right? Right. You know, and I, I you know, I saw something the other day that was concerning to me. Uh, they swore on 12 new officers, and, and uh, the, uh, the picture I saw was of a civilian person. Uh, with these 12 guys standing up like in a cattle call mm -hmm. and taking the oath of office instead of one at a time yeah. with wow. the chief looking them in the right. eye or the deputy yeah, chief right, look, right, and right, saying, right. here's the deal. Right. You know, not, not, not just disconnected. Yeah. Right. It, it, you know, messaging with cops is very important. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. I ran two agencies, I think my police officers would tell you they were very clear about my expectations. Mm -hmm. And that while we were right, I said we were right, we fought mm -hmm. and stood our ground. Mm -hmm. When we were wrong, we said we were mm -hmm. wrong mm -hmm. and uh, made it right with the people mm -hmm. we served. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that meant letting people go, firing people, mm -hmm. disciplining people. But for the most part, it, it comes from the top down. It has to come, it from, has the to come from the top down. It has to come from the top down, top down. And then, like you said, now, it, First day, then there he sits, and like I said, when I think about about him when he was at the county, when he was at the county, mm -hmm. Wapato was there then. Yes, you see what I'm saying? Wapato was and, there then. And uh, you know, hey, now now you you went you went you went down the treasury, and I'm I'm looking at this guy because I've been around there also too aspect of it, and I'm looking at him trying, wait where are you going? What do you what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I interviewed him the first time when, when he ran ran for the county. Mm -hmm. See, and I said, well look, I need come on back here, running. <laughs> I mean, let's let's sit down and talk. What do you want to do? And all due respect, I, I kind of said to myself, well, now, then there was this idea of possibly running for governor. Mm -hmm. Okay, you spent one day here, you spent another day over here, and then and the governor stuff. You feel, oh, that's too much. I I just can't run over this the state. That's not my thing. Cup of tea. So I'm gonna just go back home. And run for Portland, and that that happens to us often. If you take a look at the history of Portland, uh, you'll find people who've been in the legislature yeah. come back on the county commission yeah. or yeah. or on the city council. And there's nothing really necessarily wrong with that. But you know, the closer government is to people, the more 
it affects their lives. So, you know, what Donald Trump does, we can all argue, laugh, do whatever. But what uh, Ted Wheeler does and what the city council does makes a big difference to the livability. Today downtown, the livability yes. downtown is, is uh, based on how well prepared they are for what happens right, today right, and right, what right, happens right, later, right, you know. Right, so. right, right. Well, but I'm going to say, again, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that piece aspect of it. So what, what do you what do you suggest to him? What, what, what do we do for Ted? Well, I think I think first of all that um, he is um, the mayor. I mean, he yeah. he needs to know that. I hope he, hopefully He's, he understands that. Yeah, you know, you know, you have to understand that the the, the the silent voices in this community are probably the more important voices. Mm -hmm. They're the people who pay the bills, mm -hmm. the people who vote. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing we don't do is we don't give in to the the, the loudest five or six right. or ten people. Right. We right. just don't right. do that. Right. That doesn't mean we don't listen to people's concerns. We do. And uh, when we have problems with, you know, whether it be with the police bureau and the way they're perceived or the way they actually uh, are working with the public, we need, to, we need to deal with that correctly. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, because uh, four or five people are dissatisfied yeah. with the police bureau, yeah. Yeah. doesn't mean the whole city is. Right. And, and, you know, you, you, know, you take a look at a guy like Steve Novick, uh, who oh, yeah. was a superstar? Yep, yeah, he he lasted yep. one term. Yep, that's right. That's right. That's and right. you know why? Because he just couldn't understand that you know that there was a there was a voice uh, that he wasn't hearing from that pay the bills that want law and order downtown and they want some common sense in government. Now, now, he, now he's talking common sense. Yeah. And he's trying to come back. Yeah. He wants to come back. See? <laughs> and he, he, it's in his blood now. See? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's in his blood now, see? And he's got some good ideas. He's some good little ideas. He's a sharp guy. You know no, we know. Steve's a sharp guy. A sharp guy. A very sharp guy. Yeah. But 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 he, like you said, he he, 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 he dropped it all. He, he figured, well, I'm the smartest guy running around. Shoot. I can, I, I can yeah. do anything I want to do. Yeah, That's and we all thing. can get full of ourselves That's that right. way. I, right. I can That's tell right. you so, I had my dose so, of that. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying both aspects of it. But, but again, uh, again, well, what do you think the result's going to be today? I, I, in all due respect, I, I mean, th thanks, thank goodness for Facebook and uh, some of the, a, lot of, a lot of this communication stuff. I mean, I realize... You know, we don't have just one communication medium anymore. Well, that's the other part. That's of the other issue. That's, that's another the other issue. Part. You know, when I started law enforcement in the 1970s, uh, there was none. There was no instant communication with the people mm -hmm. you worked with or with mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. And now, t in fairness, people are trying to manage it. It's second by second changing because yes. of just what you said, yes. the social media aspect of it, putting a lot of pressure on police departments. And and typically, let me just tell you, as I. I do a radio show weekly. Um, oh, do you? Uh, yeah, on. Oh, do you really? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh. And uh, so we t we talk a lot about the fact that law enforcement and police and the legislature finds itself way behind in laws that address these kind of things and police practices that address these kind of things, and they get caught. And that's why you see the police departments in trouble about being filmed on the street because they're way behind and think yeah. they should have thought about that 10 years ago. Go, yes. And understood that, that that's public space. Yes. Anybody can photograph. Uh, a yes. photograph, a yes. video, yes. and they can't record your voice without yes. knowledge and under Oregon law, but they can do everything else that they want to. So, And, and then we try to apply old rules, and it yep. doesn't work, and yep. pretty soon we're hand-heavy, yep. yep. and we're taking cameras away from yep. people that don't need yep. their cameras taken away. Yep. So it's those kind of things. That's the kind of thing the mayor is faced with in terms of this consistency thing I'm telling you about. Yeah. Until there's consistent message coming out of City Hall about what we're not going to accept, mm -hmm. and I mean, Bruce, I mean, we're not going to accept it. No. When I tell you to stay on the sidewalk, you stay on the sidewalk. Yeah. You're not going to be wanting off the street. The yeah. first one does, first 20 get arrested, everybody else goes yeah. home. I will tell you that in 2003 when I became sheriff, uh, I got a call from the mayor, Mayor Katz at that time, mm -hmm. and the district attorney Mike Shrunk, and uh, we sat down and ready for May Day, and the mayor had had enough of the burning and looting and pillaging, and so um, we, the, I said I would donate I would I would make sure we had 25 to 30 beds uh, available. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The DA said he'd prosecute, and she said she'd arrest. Mm -hmm. And in in that one year, we did that. We mm -hmm. arrested uh, people need to be arrested fairly. Mm -hmm. 20 or 25 people. We didn't let them out until mm -hmm. they saw a judge, mm -hmm. unless they could bail. Mm -hmm. And then that ended May Day for many many years. Mm -hmm. Now. Is, is that fair? Some people will think not. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of the city that has their lives to live in this city every day, there's only that answer. Mm -hmm. is because they have a right to move safely in a free society. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the only way you keep a society free, mm -hmm. is to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. But you had leadership then. there. Yep. When you think about Shrunk and yourself and Vera, you right. know what I mean? She might have had a little different, but, but they, they were leaders. You leaders, know what I mean? right. And they knew their job. Right, you got exactly. Me? And they had that plan. Ordinarily, you, you know, today what we're lacking is that it's like saying we need people want more transparency now. Yeah, 
And the, and the reason be, because the leadership aspect of it. That's correct. The leadership. That's right. Because <laughs> they just don't trust leadership. They, they just don't trust the leadership, leadership anymore. Regard and, and the leadership deserves a lot of that 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 distrust. Exactly. Exactly. You know, people are smart. Voters are smart. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and don't think they don't know what's going yeah. on. Just because they don't stand up and say something doesn't mean they believe that they are not being properly cared it's for. It's called baby baby boomers kids. That's correct. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, well educated group. Well, like, yeah. they're in charge right now. Right. And then they're gonna. I mean, my point that they're gonna. They, you, they need strong leadership. It's not about this and that and sitting around philosophizing and analyzing. Well, you know what's really concerning, Bruce, is we, you, you know, you're a you're a, you're a, you're a marine uh, through and through, and and uh, I'm a cop through and through. And then when I look at the how difficult it's been for police departments to to recruit people now, yes. to good oh. people. You know, it used to be you couldn't get a job. There were so many applicants. Yes, you had to be a top flight. Oh, yeah, buddy, you had to look. You had to look like a jarhead. That, that's that's <laughs> exactly that's that's exactly right. <laughs> and look and physically look like if uh, you yeah. know. Enforcement. The, it, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And now oh, it, they have a hard time. It, no, don't even worry about the diversity aspect, which we need desperately. The fact is, they have a hard time even getting the numbers to get the qualified people that they right. need. We're not. We're not digging deep enough into uh, the military. And I don't mean inviting them. I mean digging deep into people who are ready and and emotionally ready to be police officers and hooking them right into what we're doing. Because you see that on the street, that discipline, yes, that, yes, that ability to make yes, decisions yes, yes. Uh, that we so lack on the street yes. now. i tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to take a short break and I'll, uh, and then we'll come back on you really needed a recruiter. Yes, so, yes, that's right. And they, they, they just didn't have a recruiter. recruiter. No, that's correct. You, you, you see what I'm saying? You nope. had to have a recruiter on your name. That's right. Okay, good. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with, with Bernie. Okay, it's been great. Fantastic. Get back. Get your coffee. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, welcome back, folks. Hey, look here. We, we, we're interviewing Bernie Gusto. It's, it's really an excellent situ opportunity here for us because we got somebody that has wisdom, has been out for years, been in the in law enforcement uh, uh, area for a number of years. We've got issues about law enforcement today. We have the opportunity and luxury, if you will, to get some ideas about Bernie. And in all due respect, you got some, you got a little wisdom on my end of it. You know, I've, I've been a Marine and I've been a solid Marine. I'm still a Marine, once a Marine, always, always a Marine, Marine aspect of it. Not that it's just an automatic, that our definition is more or less, more, we're more conservative today, but really not. We're more of a realist. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think that, you know, a little storytelling might be in order here. So we were just talking about the lack of yeah. leadership. We are yes. talking about that that silent, strong, you know, strong leadership is often silent. Right. You, oh, you yes. very see little of very it. Very much so. So, uh, well, you know, I in the old days when Governor McCall was yes. governor, and, I, and there's a lesson we learned from Governor yes, McCall Thomas, in yeah. a couple of places. You know, there was a, we had the, uh, the, the, the 68, big, yep, 69 yep, yep. Uh, demonstrations uh, that were going to happen downtown yep. against, against the Vietnam mm -hmm. War, yeah. and there was supposed to be the city was supposed to take a real incoming rounds mm -hmm. of uh, breaking windows and mm -hmm. riots, and uh, I will tell you that I know this personally because yes. I talked to the superintendent who was there, that uh, Governor McCall uh, called his cabinet together and he bought and paid for Vortex One out at uh, McIver Park. Yes. He he funded all the bands. He, he didn't buy any of the alcohol or anything, but he funded everything, including the police presence and all those troublemakers that were headed yes. downtown. Yep. Instead, thought maybe they'd go out and smoke some dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 And he made it pretty clear to everybody, nobody drunk leaves. I don't want a lot of arrests out of there for whatever mm -hmm. else, except for mm -hmm. safety issues. Yep. And, you know, there's leadership. Yep. He spent uh, maybe several hundred thousand dollars, yep. no damage downtown Portland. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing I'm yep. talking about, yep. Yep. you know. Yep. 
the the guy that was confident in his ability, and it didn't matter what anybody else thought. That's the right. governor was set he on. He just did it. He just but did. But he was it. a leader. He was a leader. You know, and statesman, and, and, statesman, and, and, a state, and it worked. And it worked. He knew he he knew the solution when he when he made the point. But he, he that's, that's key. Everybody questioned him. Believe right. me, they that's did. Right. That's right. That's right. Even the, even the, the state police questioned him. But the fact of the matter is, the governor stood his ground, yes. and he was dead right. Yes. yes. And the city of Portland was much better off for it. You know, the next one. You know, the, you know, the other guy that it comes to mind right off the bat. Whoop whoop. But. But another Marine, remember? Yes, I, I know. He, he, he offset all of the stress downtown by putting all these little bands together. Right. He did that what once a month. Right. You know, you know it, it, was a, it was a hell of a deal. You know, he's a. I know, and I and I I know the former mayor. Mayor, I think uh, I've had a chance to talk to him one on one many times, and I will tell you that he's underestimated in terms of his abilities. Yes, he is. You know, people like to think of him as that kind of back slapping kind of guy. Don't be, don't be, no, He's no, a business head. He's a very business. He, head. he came in and he cut police bureau. He the fire bureau. Yes. He said, "No, we're yes. not. But balanced. You yes. guys are going to yes. do this and do yes. that. Regardless of that, uh, I like mayor. I like and mayor. It, and, and that was respect. It was respect. It was. You know what I'm saying. I mean, you imagine being in Goose Hollow, right where he was. Yeah. Aspect of yeah. it. He did his thing. Uh, he didn't have any problems down there. You got my point. That's right. You visited. You ate. You left. And the same time, when he got when he got in, in the, when he got in and when he got in to be mayor, aspect of it. Hell, he had no background. It was just good common sense. He had people skills. He had people, people skills. skills. A ton. So when he looked in the eye of an officer and said, "Here it is. Yep. Wherever you are, he told you right there what it was. Yep. It was, it was, that, that, that's Tell what I'm that. saying about strong, underestimated leadership. That's what this mayor needs. Mm -hmm. You know, this thing downtown today, and I'm not going to be critical of how mm -hmm. the mayor handled it, except to say that the thing he did wrong was to stand up and talk about what it is he wasn't going to allow. What he should have had was the parties in quietly right. and told them, yes. I'm not this allowing this. This is no, no, no leeway, no, no second chances. You know, uh, uh, I, I was, uh, you know, I was on the TriMet board for 10 years, appointed mm -hmm. by Governor Kitzhaber mm -hmm. twice, um, and uh, on the board of directors. And I'm watching the security aspects on the train now, and thinking to myself that uh, TriMet needs to take a very careful look at the, their 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 procedures. Yeah. You know, we spend a lot of time doing neighborhood training for emergencies in the city of Portland. We need a public transportation training for the people who ride it often, because in the situation, I, just, I'm not criticizing. Believe me, this is not me telling. Somebody should have just undone something different. But what should have happened when that guy was going off, and just and just the other day, is is that when we're at a stop like that, people need to abandon that, not stand and fight. No, no, yeah, they yeah. need to just yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah. And 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 bus operators, train operators, they, they don't tell people to be quiet and quit yelling. They call the police. Yeah. They don't. And when the police come, they 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 get off and they stay off. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to do that mm -hmm. is you cannot start to deal with mental illness by thinking you could talk your way around mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, no criticism about those the two uh, people that were killed on that train. They they were heroes for for what they what they understood and what they needed what they needed to do at the moment. But uh, when things like that happen, we need to have an abandonment plan mm -hmm. at those stations. And TriMet needs to do a better job of training their riders. Oh, oh. Well, you know, when it first happened, the first thing that came to mind was sort of a mimicking. Remember back in what the Paris or London? Yes, was? right, Remember right. That? That's the first thing that came up in my mind. Right. And heroes, you know, these folks were heroes. And it, it will be interesting to see what. That when, when they question these folks, ask them why did they do this piece. Right. It'd be interesting to see what happened on that. See what I'm saying? You got me? Because all of a sudden, you know, boom, uh, I'm sitting there and I don't need a weapon. And I, it really bothered me with the, with the especially the, the military guy, but he, he did Af Afghanistan. You, you just don't sit down and try to be patient with a person with a weapon. Yeah, right. That's yeah. I mean, well, I, was, I was concerned about the two young place. ladies that were were the were the, the victims of the verbal assault did the right thing. They yes. left. They, they left, left the train, they and everybody else should have left the train. Right. And 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 I the, the the one that happened just yesterday, I believe, day before yesterday, another guy yelling on the train. The operator comes back and tells him he'll have to leave. He doesn't yeah, they, sit there. And we don't tell him anything. No. We call the police, no, yeah, and, right. and when the police come, he's off. Yeah. He's done. Oh. He does, and he never, and he's, he's now. We're going to hear people say, "Well, you can't." I understand oh, yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, we're going to we're going to take that on, and yeah. we're going to fight that battle because yeah. yeah. this can't go on. No, it can't. It can't go on. And then the other deal, the other deal, the idea of being free. You can just get in. Remember that? Right. Yeah. You can't do that. I know that's true. You can't do that. You get the ticket on before you get on. That's it's yeah. very simple to do. You either put it in the deal, turn You can do a turnstile or whatever. But the idea, you don't just let people just jump on there. And well, so you got all these homeless folks that are sitting out. 
outside, right? Right. We well, heard, you know, this, you know, the, uh, you know, the district attorneys quit prosecuting free riders, you know, yeah. because disproportionately it was affecting the, the African American community, and I understand that. Except the messaging is all wrong. Wait a minute. Wait, what was that again? Well, you, the district attorney decided not to because prosecute and, and use the use me. Well, well, I, I, I think I'm, not, I'm just throwing something. Out I think the yeah. numbers were the numbers spoke for themselves. But regardless, the yeah, messaging is wrong. Yeah. The messaging is wrong. You think that people that are that are people that are, are that are that are are likely to do that don't understand what you just said, regardless of yes, their color? Yes, yes. They, they think that all they heard is, "I'm not paying." Again, it, it's a, it's, it's a lawless. Again. Yes. It's leadership again. If I'm the supervisor, and I get these stats in the front of me, that's my job to figure out what happened. Right. Bring these guys in and get this, get them scared, squared away. Right. What's the problem? Aspect right. of it. You got my point. Right. Exactly. And you're hearing, we're hearing it in this city all the time about, and I mean, I I do it on the, on my show purposely to get the issue to the table, how white the state is. In fact, it was white, the whitest city in the in the. I say the whitest state, and the person said, well, gee, Bruce, no, that's not what they said. No, I'm trying to make my point. Right. I'm, somebody's got to come to the table and talk to this issue. I'm taking it to the governor's office. Say, look, appoint somebody. Let's talk about this stuff. Right. You know, hey, look here. The, the fact of the matter is, we got a city, and you know, we can't we can't just sit on this whole issue of affirmative action the rest of my life. Right. I want to take my wife downtown and have a cup of coffee, without a problem. Right. And that's and I'll tell you. Not someone looking at me if I if I don't have this garb on. This is protecting them really more than yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's warning them. Yeah, that's warning. That's all I'm saying. See. But 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 we're at that point now. Yeah. I want something done. Right. Well. Well. You know. Today. Today is a. Uh is a is a milestone for the city. We'll see how well yeah. things are things are handled downtown. Um, now, you know, again, I think we tend to believe that it takes a thousand people to make a problem. No, it doesn't. It no, takes no. one. It takes one. It takes two. One, two. That's right. That's, that's it. all that's it takes. It. That's it. That's it. And and when when the mayor stands up and says, "Don't come downtown with yeah. red flag," you know, the, the people that are likely to cause the problem yeah. Yeah. is all they say is the red flag. Yeah, they, they say, "Come on in." That, that's what it means. <laughs> you know, these people oftentimes have. We talk about the guy that stole the ring yeah. and the backpack from the, the person who was yeah. killed. Yeah. Well, he was uh, a vet too, by the way. Yeah, he was a vet. Navy vet. I, I know, eight years. Yeah, honorably discharged. I know. And I'm I, trying to figure out, wait a minute, he can't be homeless. And the well, VA is right there. I know. See, that's the part you, See? The, the, so, so, beyond you. Yeah, you would think that, for instance, like when those peddlers, I, I, what I used to do when I drive along and I see somebody peddling and say, I'm a vet, I stopped the car right there. I stopped traffic and all. I said, Where's your car? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, hey, if you're not, if you're not, you're, you're, you're peddling, okay, fine. If you got a problem, okay, fine. Then, you know, I'll tell you what, you go over here to this agency. But then I thought about why not the police pick the person up, pick him up. Right. And say, Show me the car. Right. If you get the car, take him out of the VA. It, he doesn't take him over this agency, but pick him up. Do something with to him. Do something with him. Just don't sit there. We got a lot of we got a lot of vets. What, what's the number now? Twenty a day are committing oh, okay. suicide. They don't even know. In fact, the other thing you asked the question: Well, how many is how many is out there? They no, still don't know that. They still don't know. They still don't know that. And, that, and I think that's that's, that's what I'm saying. Issue, see? That's what I'm saying about. There are a lot of veterans that need uh, a sponsor, caseworker, uh, yes. all right out of the door, not yes. after they wander the streets. Yes. Right out. I mean, assigned to. And you know, guys like you that will help. Oh, yeah, I can help. If, if the VA I, would if set it up. I'd be more than glad to help. In fact, I'm still helping now. You know, as far as right. outreach aspect of it. Right. But I can still remember about when I first when I first looked at this whole homeless thing aspect of it. I used to work at United Way, and I was there for about three or four years. You know. And at that point in time, the money would just go to the agencies, and then they'd, they'd have an agency that sort of figured out what the issues were. And then that's the way the money was sent. But nowadays, they change it somewhat of a format. You can pretty well de delegate what way you want your money to go. Right. So my thought is, that, hey, uh, why not adopt a, a homeless? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, I could take the money to buy. I could probably, We could buy a WAP until overnight. Overnight, you see what I'm saying? Well, see, and again, you know, even with a place like Inverness, with oh, yeah, Inverness, Inverness has about twelve hundred beds yeah, in there, you know. Saying? Work something out, you know. Give the money to the city and, and work that con that concept you had. Yeah, that's right. But my point is that people are concerned. They want to they want to do something. So let them do something. If you got if you got a united way, you can raise the money overnight. Yep. What happened to these guys at, uh, on this on that whole issue with reference to the the train deal, on the cutting? They raised a million bucks overnight. I know. Excuse the French. Their face was white for a minute. But see, that's the other thing that I just did a show over here with the Cecil, and I said, "Look, we we have, we we have a uh, we have a situation where we can talk about all these issues. We can talk about race issues there. 
We can do about the Muslim issue there. Right. We can talk about mental illness issues there. Right. We got law enforcement there. And so let's take it and discuss it. Right. And talk about it. Just straight up. Don't play games with it. Right. Because talk if you got a frankly. perception of a people, frankly. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. I said, those two young ladies, that's what I'm just saying. He, he, he runs a show, and most of his, uh, his viewers are black. Fine. Their, their perception is that, gee whiz, the first thing that comes out with a number of the folks with, well, gee whiz, if he was black, the guy would have been shot overnight. You see what I'm saying? Right. He would have been killed right on the spot. I, if I he have, ran away, uh, he, why did they... So, so you got this divide now. So I, have, I, have a, I have black friends very well educated that feel the you, same you way. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Now, that's an educated guy. Yeah. See? Now, here I am. I'm just a jarhead. I'm not oh, educated. Oh, yeah. Don't give me that. <laughs> I'm better than I'm that. I'm low-key. I don't You're, know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that for 20 <laughs> years. So, so I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, let's right. deal with the issue. Right. Okay? Let's deal with the issue. Let's deal with the issue. So I'm just sharing to the mayor and aspect of it when when I think Think about when he announced uh, uh, to the world. Announced to the world. We, we do have this thing now with us. We got a whole new media force out right. there. They announced this thing to the whole world. And we got all this icy stuff coming in. Right. These folks are looking for this kind of stuff. Right, exactly. Gathering aspect of it. Right. So if you're going to say you're going to announce putting something right, in the, right across the street in the federal building, I'm just saying, okay, fine. Well, here's the deal. We're going to fence the whole goddamn area. Right. We're going to have two entryway. Right. You're going to maybe right. metal detectors or whatever. You can't come in there. Let, let the people know what it is. The person's going to be up there, freedom of speech or whatever. But the bottom line, now, if you're out there milling around, that won't happen. If you want to come to this venue, mm -hmm. you come in and you bang. See what I'm saying? Right. You come in. And we got it contained. Right. If not that, you say, well, okay, fine. Well, we got the Coliseum over there. It's not busy this weekend. Oh, there's you a see lot. what I'm saying? Some, some controlling kind of right. thing. And tell the world, hey, look, you can't come here and we, just mill on the streets. So what, so, so what did the story turn out to be? It turned out to be the mayor telling people yeah. First Amendment rights yeah. issues. When, when really, we can all just, we can discuss that later. We, yes. Right now, we've got the safety of the That's city. Right. That's right. The, the That's right. social public order the city right. to deal with first right. and people safely you know if i'm a merchant downtown i'm beginning to wonder if that's a place i oh, need to hey, be hey buddy i mean pissing, people pissing in the goddamn deal and crapping out and, and even at delta park people you, and you know the, the, in all due respect women can't take their dogs out there and et cetera anymore you got me you got you, you've got all these folks that are just sitting there human beings i know i remember when it was raining and you know imagine being out there in that rain and that cold and people are dying and all kinds of stuff right or going down the butt clock uh, plaza up there and just walk in that room where those people are sitting down there old folks young folks and whatever that's an insult right it is that's a stone insult. Or you walking downtown and some guy's just laying down there, sleeping. Yeah, and I, again, you know, we, you know, I, I'm, I'm extraordinarily disappointed with uh, the lack of focus about mental illness yeah, oh, at, yeah. at, oh, at, at, at the presidential level all the way down oh, yes. to the state level. And I understand, you know, no, it really is not an issue of priority anymore. It is the top priority we it's have. Top. In, country and, and especially it relates to uh, juveniles yes uh, uh, the the adolescent mental illness in this country is eating us alive and, and our, the next generation do you think it's bad now hey. it's going to be very hey. bad then and you know we need to go back to centralized mental health that we manage correctly uh, places like damage that were managed correctly yes. Yes. where there is humane uh, consistent um, a time for people to get well. They're, they're not there three days mm -hmm. because in jail mm -hmm. it's three days medication mm -hmm. and back on the street. Mm -hmm. That's our that's our plan for mm -hmm. the mentally ill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Well, that's the best plan we have in the state of Oregon. Well, like you said, Brandon, it's about the money. Yep, it's about the money. But yep, the money's money. got to come because yep. it's destroying this country. Yep, it is big time. It, and it's it's a part of what's driving us apart. You see, the, the regardless of what you think about the thing on the train or anything else, yeah, yeah. that at the base of it is mental illness. It's now, mental illness. I'm not. Forgiving no, 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 it? No, 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 no. Same here. Same here. I mean, I, I wouldn't have had a problem with the guy. I mean, I, I the, remember when I when I was up there when I was campaigning and whatever, and I'm down on 82nd and aspect of it. I'm Bruce Broussard. I hear these guys. I, I go right, right, right up there, right up front. What's your problem? Right. Exactly. Ask. You know. Right. What, what you, what's your problem? Well, sir, sir. Sir. Because I got my gear on, right? Respect. If you're gonna demand respect, you gotta look respectful. Mm -hmm. Got me? And a person would like to ask that question. But sure. if you got a mental problem, hey, people are not stupid. No, they're not. You got my point? Yeah. I can get rid of you. I can do whatever I want to you today. And, and just like the guy said when and, and they captured that on they captured that in a I guess some sort of an interview. He said, Well, I told the judge, I mean here he is in the in the front of the judge, yelling at the judge and this, that and the other. Wait a minute. You can't yell in my court. 
Well, I, 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 I should have been. You, you understand what I'm saying? Well, but the, the judge should have told him was we'll see you in, we'll see you tomorrow. No, uh, no, I would know that. Take, I would I would figure that before he came. Yeah. If he started if he started howling in the cell, no, this is what you're gonna do. That's right. No, I, we have the deputies you remove him. You understand what I'm saying? Deputies remove he, he him, can, and, and they right. can't show that to the public because you got this guy over here that's saying, why should I have to? Right. Suffering with the with the deal. Uh, look, why don't we just get about maybe 20 of us and we go down the Safeway and and just maybe rip off a steak and say, hey, I ripped off a steak. Yeah, I and know. And you, you pick me up, right? Right. I get three meals a day, right? Well, so the guy. Oh, this so, is a sad note. So, well, so the guy that uh, the the person who stole the backpack and the ring. Yeah. You know, he'd been arrested 20. He's yes. 25 times. Yes. 25 yes. times. So so what the system taught him was there is no yes, system. that's right. right. And the same guy that did the, the cutting. Yeah, right. He had fell in the whole nine yards. Yeah, right. Wait a minute. And then he's been getting on the bus. Oh, wait a minute. Right. He's not the issue. Right. It's that's, the system that allowed him to do that. that right, exactly. You got my point? Exactly. And then he makes the statement, in all due respect, he's looking for a sanctuary city. <laughs> if I can get arrested, you know, I, now I've got a place people are going to guard me. I don't have to worry about anything. Right. They might write me a book. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just being a punk with it. I know it's, it, you know, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Well, it's, 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 and that's a serious deal. Because well, it's, you know, it's undermining the faith of the people oh. having, the, and that's where we get issues like Measure Eleven because oh. people get tired yes. of what they see. So then they pass only Measure Eleven that that indiscriminately punishes people uh, that need probably a second chance, yeah. but, that, but people are tired of second, exactly, and third chances. Exactly. You know? and I, in fact, I made another point when I was about this this uh, this sanctuary city thing. I said, gets, I, I made a point. I said, well, look, it's getting down to the point. I need a sanctuary city <laughs> just to survive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get me first before I start bringing in a sanctuary city about an issue that, guess what, I'm paying for it too. Yeah, but we, we, uh, Bruce, we need desperately people who stay engaged like the 40 years you've been engaged, oh, you know, in this community. Right? You know, you've held a lot of people accountable in my time here, and that included me, you know, back when I was sheriff, and we talked about some tough issues. And vice versa. Well, vice versa. You know, when versa. I think about the Mike Shrunks of the world, in fact, I think about Vera, you know, I might have a difference in that aspect of it, but we knew who we were. That's right, you know, exactly right. French, if I was an asshole, you'd say, hey, look, get this guy off the street. You got my point? And I'm I'm yeah. just saying, hey, look, no, I'm not an ass. My point is that we just need the leadership, and I, I can't run everything. I, no. I can't be everybody. No, that's you. right. And, I, and I'm not trying to tell you how to run your job, but use my wisdom. Well, you know, if I were if I were looking forward a number of years, I don't have to worry about. I'd be very concerned about the young leadership that doesn't oh. exist doesn't exist in this state. And in the, actually, in this nation, that's right. I worry very much about the fact that it's all left to people like me and you, yeah, and, yeah. and and maybe a few a few more, but uh, but not enough. There's not enough no. young, thoughtful uh, people with common sense and and a commitment to put themselves not first. Yeah. You know, uh, leadership and, and being the sheriff and chief is not about the position. It's about how the position can make people's lives better. That's well, it's a thankless job to begin with. Yeah. You got me. It's not a money job. No, it's not. You know what I mean? You may pick up your purse for hundred thousand dollars, but you won't spend it. You can't spend it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You don't. Where do you live? Yeah, that's right. So you can be living in a million dollar house. Yeah. And still get hit. I mean, I remember this one marine, uh, marine flyer or something. He was living up in the in the in the woods somewhere or something. I don't know where it was. Uh, hero and a whole nine yard. And some guy came there and hacked him. Right. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, I do remember that one actually. He was trying to retire. Just right. Kind of, just retire up in the woods somewhere, right? Yeah. But guess what? Right here. Well, you never know. I mean, we can we can walk out of the studio today and and just don't know, yeah. you know, what kind of mental illness you're going to find on the street of people who the system has just absolutely taught exactly. them there is no there exactly. is no uh, sanction any yeah. longer. And right? see, and that's why I'm saying on the sanctuary city thing, I want to find out in the city of Portland. I want to interview this person. <laughs> Why you signed off? I want to find out who signed off on it. Right. What legislators and where? Now give us the rationale. Right. Okay. And if you really p believe in that kind of a situation, or if that's what you want to do, why don't we start off with your home? Why don't you? Why, right. why don't you take one in with you, <laughs> and share everything? <laughs> blah blah blah. You know how far that's going. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. But that's what we are. See. Right. I don't know. You, you got to yeah. quit playing games. I'm I'm tired of it. I got my wife. I'm trying to figure out now. Wait a minute now. I can't leave my home. And even now, I mean, you get on a board or something like that, and you, somebody might get a little wacky and do something crazy to your car or something like that. You know, then you got to get in the board meeting and say, let me tell you something, if I catch you, <laughs> you know, you don't have to call nobody because I'm going to get it. It'll be done. I you know, put it that way. Yeah, you know, my, I'm, I'm just, this is my last month on the Education Service District yeah, Board of Directors. Yeah, was, was, yes. And I've been there since uh, 2008. Been there yes. And uh, I, I chaired it a couple years. 
uh, when I was there, and that was a change from law enforcement education. Yeah, right. But I, but with the population we served were, were people that were that needed ex, uh, extraordinary services, uh, special education folks, mm -hmm. people with serious uh, for mm -hmm. kids, kids with uh, serious medical problems, learning disabilities. Uh, and those kind of things, mm -hmm. and uh, you see a very vulnerable population yeah. that really is, it doesn't have time to worry about yeah. whether or not their their, their leaders are doing the right yeah. thing, yeah. and yeah. and a and a public that's paying uh, extraordinarily uh, a, a lot of uh, yeah. spent a lot of money trying to make yeah. it right for them, and these people are just trying to get by yeah. daily, yeah. Yeah. and and the people that provide those services do are doing God's work in our classrooms. Yeah. I can yeah. tell you. Yeah. Gee, Bernard, this has been good. Look like we're going to do this again, huh? Maybe we can get maybe. somebody else. Maybe, in fact, maybe get Mike on the table. Get yeah. Mike at the table. I don't, I don't know how Vera's doing. How's she doing, by the way? I haven't, you know, I haven't seen her. her. I, haven't, I, I actually I talked to the doing. district attorney for yeah, a long time. Yeah, so. yeah. And I know Bud, you know, every so often, he's trying to he's trying to take it easy a little bit himself every so often, you know. I see him maybe once a year on Marine Corps Day when the Navy puts on deal and we get together. Ted is still around. Yeah. Another good lead aspect of it. And I guess my point is that I'm just saying, we need some of the some of this wisdom kind of folks to be a little bit more assertive. I, I agree. You and understand the, what I'm saying? And I agree. And they need help. Those young folks need help. They need help. You they, see what I mean? I'm they, reaching out to some of the folks that are out there in the streets of aspect. They're having them on their show. We need, need encouragement. Yeah, that's that's yeah. The, you've always been good about encouraging young leadership. So. And Joe Walsh, you know, he's a he's a he's he's on oxygen and he's out there fighting like some young dude. In the, you know, aspect of it. And it, but but he come on the show aspect of it. I got a young lady by the name. My name is Winnie. You know what I mean? She she used the the the, the 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 four words all the time aspect of it, but now I tell people right, we're in, that's the communication we're dealing right, with today. Right. We can't get it away until we can go through another deal site. Right. But right now we got to communicate that way, unfortunately. Right, that's correct. You and see I what I mean? And the but if she's got something to bring to the table, let her come up with the four. Right. I want to know who she is yes. and what she brings to the table. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. But we got those are leaders as far as I'm concerned. Right. Make them responsible. Make them responsible, and make them and and young people who generation of people who are going to communicate that way and need to learn to lead that way. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's, that's a very important piece. So look, this has been great. I mean, it's been very educational. Now you told me about it, Robert. I was I was sort of identifying with you, but hey, it was there before you got there. I was. <laughs> it, was. It, it was there before you got there. Good so we can still do a Wapato deal we with the hundred and twentieth. We that's can still right. do that, and we, the money's going to be cheaper. So they said ninety days for these guys. Yeah, but now, we still need we need to. We need to open Wapato right. and turn uh, Inverness right. into that right. homeless right. mental health right. piece that right. we need so badly exactly. in this county. And I, money, I don't want to hear the money no, issue. No, no, the no, money's no. there. It's there. The mental health issue and the homeless issue is number one and right. two to, to make our community livable. And not just about the people who are homeless and mentally, but the people who deserve to have an environment by which they can feel compassionate about how their government right. is taking care of those other right. vulnerable folks. But it has been just great. Thanks. Fantastic. Can we do this again sometime? We can. Okay. We'll do All it right. soon. All right, buddy. Well, look, you heard him. You heard it. You know, again, like I said, we're going to have to assume that some of that responsibility. I mean, really, we should be out there fishing, but guess what? We don't have the time. <laughs> 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 we got to do something about it, right? Right. Okay, fine. Folks, thank you very much for being with us. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, okay? Maybe we'll discuss this issue downtown. Okay? Have a good one.